This massive golden wall is worth £20,000. Today's three players have never met before. Can they work together to keep the wall intact? Or will they leave with nothing? Decimate. This is Decimate. Decimate. Thank you very much and welcome to Decimate. Let's meet this lovely team hoping to win some big money today. I'm Sarah, I'm a primary school teacher from East London. I'm Hugh, a technical design manager from West Wales. I'm Helen, a plus size fitting model from Surrey. Helen, welcome to the show, my love. Thank you. So, a plus size fitting model. Indeed. It must be an honour doing something like that, is it? Well, yeah, I think everyone mentions model and expects, you know, slim, blonde, tall. No, I'm not. Any anyway, welcome to the show, my darling. Thank you. Hugh! Hello. I don't know if to say hello or wrestle you. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, buddy? Fine, thank you very much. And a technical designer? Yeah, yeah. What would you do outside work? I strap on armour and actually travel around the country, sort of reenactments, medieval reenactment. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Any particular reenactments? Um, generally 15th century, late 15th century, War of the Roses type stuff. Well, listen, welcome to the show. Hope you enjoy yourself. Sarah, now this should help, guys, because she's a primary school teacher. <laughs> Why are you laughing, Sarah? Because I feel like you stitched me up now. No! Come on, we've got a font of knowledge here being a school teacher. Yeah, the alphabet, you know, two times tables. Yeah, maybe some nursery rhymes questions yeah. come up. <laughs> Listen, guys, welcome to the show. I've got a good feeling you're going to do well today. Here's how the game works. The golden wall is worth £20,000. It's divided into ten columns, worth £2,000 each. One at a time, you're going to step forward to face ten questions, one per column. Get a question right, and that column is safely protected and beautifully illuminated like this. Get the money and it will stay in the game, but should you get a question wrong, I'm afraid this is what will happen. Decimate. Yes. That column is wiped out and the cash is lost for good. So the idea, guys, is to protect as much money as you can, because once all three of you have played, that is going to be what is at stake in the end game. So are we ready to start? Sarah, Hugh and Helen, yeah? Yes. yes. Right, yeah, what we yeah. need to do now is choose... One of you who's going to come and play round one. But to help you decide, I'm going to reveal some keywords. And these are going to appear in the first round of ten questions. So here are your ten keywords. They are... Coin. Magic Whip. Guru Nanak. Earth's Mantle. Big Bang. French Guyana. Women's World Cup. Guy Fawkes. Christo Redentor. And Damien Hurst. Now... Seeing those keywords, which one of you is going to step forward for the first time and face the golden wall? You've know, got to decide, guys, who's going to play next. Who's it going to be? I'm not confident. No. I'd say maybe four I'm not, at most. No, I'm not confident. There's probably about three or four of those that I'm happy, so... Are you willing to go first, then? I'll yeah, take one for the team. OK, oh, if it makes you happy. All right, the ladies have ganged up on you. OK. I see how this is going to be played out today, yeah. all right? So, Hugh, you're going to be first to take on the Golden Wall, but before you do, it's up to Sarah and Helen to give you as much information regarding these keywords as possible. Ladies, don't let him down. Briefing, 20 seconds. Starts now. Guru Nanak and Christo Redentor. Um, I don't know who Christo Redentor is. I have no idea at all. French Guiana? Yes. Capital? Anything? I or... don't know. No, I can't remember. Oh, so sorry. Who won the Women's World Cup? Japan. Okay. Yeah. It definitely wasn't England, was it? I think French they were in Guiana, okay. South America, kind okay. of towards the island. All right, time's up, guys. 20 seconds flies by, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Hugh, be honest, was that any help? No. Not really. No, okay, <laughs> well, they're relying on you, OK? OK. It's time to step forward and face the golden wall. <laughs> you. Feeling all right, buddy? Been nominated by the ladies first up? Yeah, I know. You're going to sell through. You'll be all right. You'll be all right, because you're not completely okay. on your own, OK? Right. If there's an answer you're not sure about, you can pass back the question to your teammates. And if they think you've given a wrong answer, they can buzz in to overrule you and change your answer. But you only have, as a team, five overrules and five passbacks. So between all three of you over the whole show, make sure you use them wisely, OK, guys? Right, you. This is your game, round one, to protect column number one, £2,000. Here comes your first question. Which British coin was removed from circulation in 1984? Was it? Halfpenny, sixpence, or the half crown? 
Um, I seem to remember using half pennies, half pennies. I, I can never remember using a sixpence or half a crown. Um, so I'm gonna have to say half penny. Right, we're gonna lock in half penny. There's no overall from your teammates. I think they may be quietly confident in your answer, or they just haven't got a clue. <laughs> Is half penny the right answer? Onwards and upwards, yes. yes. Good start to yeah. the game, Duke. Right, to protect another £2,000. Five pass packs, five overalls still in play. Column number two. In 2015, which band released The Magic Whip, their first album for 12 years? Was it Blur, Ride or Pulp? I remember all three bands from the 90s, um, but I don't think that Pulp or Ride have actually released anything recently, so I probably have to go with Blur. OK, Blur's right, we're going to protect another £2,000. Did Blur release an album called The Magic Whip? Yes, they did! Yes. Oh. Right, let's get the hat trick now, buddy. Column number three for another £2,000. 20 grand still on the wall. Guru Nanak was the founder of which religion? Was it Sikhism, Hinduism, or Jainism? My guess would be Hinduism. I don't know who founded any of those three religions. I'm hoping that if they know better than Hinduism, they'll sort of speak now. Okay, we're gonna lock in Hinduism. And it's an overall from your teammates. Get in there, ladies. I, I think it's Sikhism. Yes, Sarah, you think so? Because I'm pretty sure there's some gurus in Sikhism. Okay, so we're changing Hugh's answer from Hinduism to Sikhism. I can't watch. <laughs> we want to keep £2,000. Let's not lose column number three. With the overall, were the ladies right to overall Sikhism? Yes, they were! Sarah! Well done, sweetheart. Saved by the school teacher. Right, we're in a great position. Four overalls in play and five pass backs to protect column number four, another £2,000. Question number four. What is the name of the zone in the Earth's mantle on which the tectonic plates rest? Is it lithosphere, hydrosphere, or asphenosphere? Ooh, my guess would be lithosphere. Um, I'm gonna pass this back. We're passing it back. I'm, I'm going to pass this back. All right, passing it back to the ladies. Well, I know uh, hydro is water, so I, I, I don't think it's that one. I think it's, I don't know, first or third one. Um, I was going first or third. They both sound familiar, but I was edging more for Lifus there. I, I think, think we should, yeah, let's just go yeah. with that. Should we lock it in? Yeah. Well, obviously, I'm of no help, so well, let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> we're locking in Lithosphere. If this is right, we're going to protect another £2,000. Was Hugh right to pass back? The girls think it's lithosphere. No! No, no, no! The answer we were looking for was, in fact, athenosphere. Ah, uh, uh, not to worry. Listen, we're still in a good position, team. We're now playing for £18,000. Let's light up column number five. What is the name of Jim Parsons' character in the TV series The Big Bang Theory? Is it Leonard Hofstadter? Howard Wolowitz or Sheldon Cooper? Luckily, I know this one. It's Sheldon Cooper. Sheldon Cooper? Let's lock in Sheldon Cooper. Hugh seems 100% certain. If he is, we're going to light up and protect another £2,000. Is it the right answer? Yes, it is. Well done. We're back on track now. Column number six. To protect another £2,000, we've got four passbacks and four overalls still in play. What is the capital of French... Guiana, is it Quito, Cayenne, or Paramaribo? Cayenne, that's a pepper. Um, other than that, Mar Param Maribo, I don't know. Something says to be a Quito. It's a shot in the dark. Um, shot in the dark would be Quito. Okay, we're gonna go for a shot in the dark. We're gonna lock in Quito. This is right. We're going to light up column number six to protect another £2,000. Is it the right answer? Desert. Oh, Hugh, I'm so sorry, mate. We've lost oh, well. column number six. The answer we were looking for was... Oh. KN. So it's not just a pepper? No, it's not just oh. a pepper. It's the capital of French Guiana. Quito is the capital of Ecuador. Right. The wall is now worth £16,000. 
We want to protect column number seven. Here comes the next question. England were knocked out at which stage of the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup? Was it quarterfinal, group stage, or semi-final? A big event. Oh, yeah, I know they got further than they've ever got before. I've got a feeling it's the semi-final. I think they were third or fourth. I'm going to say semi-final. OK, we're going to lock in the semi-final. If this is right, we'll protect another £2,000. Is it the right answer? Yes, well played, you. Right, question number eight. We've got four passbacks and four overalls still in play. Here it comes. Which false name did Guy Fawkes use during his involvement with the gunpowder plot? Was it John Johnson, Tom Thompson, or David Davidson? Ooh, that's a good three aliases there. Yet again, I'm going to I'm gonna have to shoot it in the dark, and it would be John Johnson. Um, I'm hoping that if someone knows better, they'll overrule, but... OK. There's only one way to find out. Let's lock in John Johnson. The ladies may think you're right. Column number eight. Yes, he did. Oh. Good to you. Good. Right. This is turning out to be a very interesting and important <laughs> round one. Penultimate question. Still playing for £16,000 to protect. Column number nine. Brazil's Cristo Redentor statue is situated on which mountain? Is it Corcovado, Sugarloaf, or Morro da Urca? I think it's Sugarloaf. I'm not sure. I think that's where the statue of Christ is. Um, I'd have to go with Sugarloaf. We're going to lock in Sugarloaf Mountain. Once again, there's no overall from your teammates. They think you may be right. Column number nine. Is Sugarloaf the right answer? Decimate. Really wanted that one. The answer we're looking for was, in fact, Corco Vardu. Right. We've lost column number nine. The wall is still worth a healthy £14,000. Your last and final question, four passbacks, four overalls still in play, Hugh. Here comes your last and final question in round one. In the Damien Hirst sculpture, Mother and Child Divided, what type of animal represents the mother? Is it horse, shark or cow? I'm fairly sure it's not a horse. I know that he has pickled um, a shark. I know he's pickled a cow. And I think the cow is split down the centre. So, yeah, I'll, I'll have to go with cow. We're locking in cow to protect another £2,000. Column number 10 to keep £14,000 in play. Column number 10. Is cow the correct answer? Yes, it is. Yes. You well done, buddy. Good round, pal. Thank you very Go much. Enjoy your teammates. Yes. Lovely. Good stuff. So we have £14,000 still in the game. We're going to take that and spread it evenly across 10 new columns. And... It's going to look like this. Beautiful. There we go. £14,000 on the wall. Each column is now worth £1,400. Right. Sarah, Helen, who's going to play next? Here are those crucial keywords to help you ladies decide. They are Three Musketeers, Piers, Cuckoo's Nest, Rinkadon, Fragrances, British Leyland, Greenwich Meridian, Sri Lanka, Nobel Prizes, and Handbag. Sarah Helen, who do you think is best to play this round? Yeah, I know about three there. Yeah, I think about five. five yeah. I want... know about one. Yeah, I'll, yeah do, I'll you want to, do you want to do this one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right, Sarah. All right, Hugh, Helen, before Sarah steps up to face the golden wall, it's up to you to give as much information to do these keywords as possible. You have 20 seconds. Briefing starts now. British Leyland. Um, cars. British cars in the 1970s ended up um, amalgamation of various other Mini. companies. Um, Austin. Mini, no, was it the yeah, Mini? Yeah, it was. Rye, 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 I don't know that. Um, I don't Jumas, know that. Three Musketeers. Um, Handbags. Piers. Piers Morgan. Um, Piers, or Piers. Oh, it's your time, it's up. Right, Sarah, did any of that help? 
Um, something about British Leyland and minis, maybe. Well, we're going to find out as I ask you to step forward and face the golden wall. <laughs> well, I've got to be honest with you, Hugh's left you in a good position. OK, you have four passbacks and four overalls. Feeling all right, darling? No. <laughs> you nervous? Come on, you're going to be fine, all right? All right. If you need me, I'm here. Okay. That's all you need to worry about. I'm going to be all here right. for you, all right, all right. sweetheart? Good girl. Question number one. To protect £1,400. Which of these is not one of the three musketeers in a novel by Alexandre Dumas? Is it Aramis, Dantes, or Porthos? Okay, I, I know this. Well, I think. Why are you saying it's so surprised? You're a primary school teacher. I know, but you know. Um, Aramis is kind of the lover, Porthos is uh, the rough one. And um, I think I'm a bit of a Porthos. I, I would agree, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, so I, I'm going to lock in Dantes. Okay, to kickstart your game, to get across that golden wall, we're going to lock yeah. in Dantes. If he was not one of the three musketeers, then we're going to light up column number one. Is Dantes the right answer? Good start to the game, Sarah. Well done, sweetheart. Right, column number two. Four passbacks, four overall still in play. Which of these British seaside locations is home to the North, Central and South Piers? Is it Brighton? Bognor Regis or Blackpool? Um, I don't think it's Brighton. I think they only had one pier and it burnt down. I've never been to Bognor. Um, I went to Blackpool when I was little. My mum loved Blackpool. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's a couple of piers, one with a pleasure beach and another one. So I'll go for Blackpool. We're going to lock in Blackpool. Has Blackpool got a north, central and south pier? If they have, we've just protected £1,400. Yes, it has! <laughs> Question number three, to protect another £1,400. Which character does Danny DeVito play in the film One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Is it Cheswick, Martini or Turkle? Um, seen the film? I've seen the film, I've read the book. Great book. I'm not sure on this. Um, my instinct is Turkle. Um, I think if they know, then they can overrule. OK, we're going to lock in Turkle. And they can overrule if they need to. They're not overruling. Oh, dear. Don't think they've got a clue. Yeah, no, I don't either. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is right, we're going to protect column number three to keep £14,000 in play. Did Danny DeVito play Turkle in the film One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? Yeah. The character he played was Martini. Unfortunately, we have lost column number three. The wall is now worth £12,600. To protect, though, column number four, let's get this one right. Rinkadon typus is the scientific name for which animal? Is it elephant shrew, rhinoceros beetle, or the whale shark? Rhinoceros beetle sounds too obvious, but Rinkadon has almost got rhino in it. I'm going to go for Rhinoceros beetle and hope that maybe Hugh or Helen will know some animals and overall. Should we lock it in? Rhinoceros beetle. We're locking in Rhinoceros beetle to protect column number four. Come on, let this be right. Column number four, Rhinoceros beetle. Desert. <laughs> You know what? It's, it made sense to me, darling. I've been looking for that. Obvious, though, wasn't it? The answer we were looking for was whale shark. Well, I didn't know that, so. No, not to worry. Okay, we've lost two columns in a row. It's important we try and get back on track to the halfway mark to protect another one thousand four hundred pounds. Here comes question number five. The fragrances "Hom," "Instinct," and "The Essence" are endorsed by which celebrity? Is it George Clooney? David Beckham or Enrique Iglesias? I don't really wear male fragrance, so I'm not 100% on this. Like what I'm wearing? It's all right, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, I definitely know that David Beckham does have fragrances, so I'll go with David Beckham. OK, we're locking in David Beckham. If this is right, we're back on track to keep 11,200 in play. Is David Beckham... The celebrity who endorses Hom, Instinct and The Essence. 
Yes, he is. We're back. Sarah, we're back in the game now, darling. Up to the halfway mark. To protect column number six now. Here comes question number six. In October 1980, which model of car was launched by British Leyland? Was it the Vauxhall Cavalier, the Jaguar XJ6, or the Austin Metro? Okay, in the briefing, yeah. um, someone definitely mentioned Austin. Yeah. So I'll go with the Austin Metro, hoping that that's the right type of Austin. Should we lock it in? Yeah, lock We're going to lock in Austin Metro. Yeah. Was the Austin Metro launched back in October 1980 by British Leyland? Yes, it was. Is that you, Hugh? Good stuff, pal. Thanks, Hugh. Good stuff. Question number seven. Four passbacks, four overalls still in play. The Greenwich Meridian is at how many degrees longitude? Is it zero, 90, or 180? This is stuff I should know. Primary school teacher? And yes, then you should. I don't know it right now. So, um, longitude, I think, is the ones that go down, latitude go across. And I know that time zones, they're all zero is the Gr Greenwich Meridian. I'll, I'll go for zero and right. then they can overrule. Feel free to overall, guys. We're locking in zero. Primary school teacher Sarah. Oh no. To light up column number seven. To I'm protect, never going to live this down, am to I? To protect 1,400 pounds. Is zero the correct answer? Yay! <laughs> Did you know that, team? Yeah. yeah, we knew that. Oh, that's fine then. I was covered. <laughs> I don't think they did. I think they're lying. <laughs> right, question number eight. We are really back on track. Come on, 11,200 still in play. The country formerly known as Ceylon changed its name to Sri Lanka in which decade? Was it the 1950s, the 1960s, or the 1970s? Um, I've been to Sri Lanka. Yeah? But I went when it was called Sri Lanka. So that doesn't really help. Um, I would think 60s, but I'm going to pass this back. OK, we're going for the pass back. The second pass back of the game for Hugh and Helen. She needs your help here, guys. Right. Um, I think it's 70s. I'm easy to go with either answer. I, th I think it's 70s. Sarah thinks it's 60s. You make the choice. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sarah's was, was as much a guess as anything else. Um, and I'm thinking that you've got an idea of it, so well, 19, 1970s? We'll go 1970s and hope for the best. Right, let's go <laughs> 1970s and hope for the best. Okay. Is 1970s the correct answer? Was Sarah right to pass back? Yes, she was! Well Good done, teamwork. Sarah. It was actually 1972. Well done, team. Good work. Right. This is a great game, Sarah, so far. Your penultimate question to protect column number nine. Which of these Nobel Prizes is the only one awarded in Oslo rather than Stockholm? Is it medicine, peace or literature? Ooh, I might go for literature, just because, really, and then they can overrule if they know more. OK. We're going to lock in literature to light up column number nine. £1,400. We want this one, Sarah, to keep 11200 in the game. Is literature the correct answer? Decimals. No! Oh. <sighs> Sarah, the answer we're looking for was... Peace. Oh, never mind. Peace. Now, we're still in a good position, OK? The wall is now worth £9,800. And after this, we only have one more round to play with Helen. You have three passbacks, four overalls. Here comes your last and final question. Okay. In The Importance of Being Earnest, which character delivers the famous line, a handbag? Is it Gwendolyn Fairfax, Lady Bracknell, or Miss Prism? I remember reading this when I was at, at university. None of those ring a bell. Maybe Lady Bracknell? No, I, I can't remember this, so I'm going to use another pass back. OK, passing back to the team. Hugh, Helen. Um, I can hear the line in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably agree with Lady Bracknell, but I don't know. I've never, never read it. I haven't read it either, but let's go with Lady Bracknell. 
Okay, so we're gonna go with Lady Bracknell to finish Sarah's game with a golden wall, if it's right. Did Lady Bracknell deliver the famous line? A handbag. Yes, she did! Come in, darling. Well played. Ooh, all right, go and join your teammates. What a good game. We now have £9,800 at stake. As before, we're going to take that and divvy it up into 10 new columns, and it's now going to look beautiful like this. There we go. Each column is now worth £980. Helen. You're up last, my love. I am. The more columns you can keep in play, the more cash you'll be taking through to the end game. Do you have a look at your keywords? Yes. Okay, here they are. Orbit, clavichord, Italian cake, Cambridge, Halcyon, Salem, neck, Corin, pubs, freestanding structure. How do you feel about them? Yes, not great, but um, I'm going to go with it. Okay, <laughs> we've got the advantage of having a briefing. Sarah Hugh, don't let Ellen down. 20 seconds starts now. Trev Cord. Trev Is that something to do with that? Is it? That's it's that's a bone. Yeah, Clavicord. yeah. No. Um, Salem Witch Trials. Halcyon. Yeah. Coram. This is Victoria Coram. Halcyon. Ellie Golden has got a, a song, Halcyon, or maybe Halcyon. an album. Halcyon, is it? Cambridge. Yeah. Tally, Cambridge. Italian Cake Punishers. Yeah. Um, Freestanding Structure. Right, you lovely team. Your time is up. Helen, it's up to you now, my love. Time to step forward and face the golden wall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we're in a good position here, Helen. We are. We have two pass backs and four overalls in play. We want to bring 9,800 into the end game, sweetheart, okay? To protect 980 pounds, here comes question number one. Which planet in our solar system has an orbit which is closest to that of Earth? Is it Venus, Mercury, or Mars? Don't even think about it. You know the answer to this. I, of course I know the answer go to on this. Then. I'm going to go straight in with Mercury. Yeah? I we're am. all over this, aren't we? OK, we we're are. going to lock in Mercury. We've got it. Oh! Whoa! Ooh. Ooh. So, your teammate's going to change your answer. From Mercury to... Mars. 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 We're locking in Mars. This has got to be right. Because we want to light up column number one. Were they right to overrule Helen? Desert. Is Mercury the right answer? No, it's Venus. Whoa. <laughs> We're all off the hook. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've lost column number one. The wall is now worth 8,820. Two pass backs, three overalls in the game. Let's light up column number two with question number two. What type of instrument is the clavichord? Is it brass, woodwind, or keyboard? Okay, I don't play instruments, so this is going to be really difficult for me. Um, I think you play chord on keyboard. I think I'm going to go with keyboard. Should we lock in keyboard? Let's lock in. We're locking keyboard. in keyboard. Let's light up column number two. Clavichord is a type of keyboard. Of course it is. <laughs> yes. Right. Column number three. Two pass packs, three overalls still in play. What is the name of the Italian cake that is traditionally eaten at Christmas? Is it Panettone, Dresna Stolen, or Basbusa? I think I know that Panettone is Italian, so I am going to go with Panettone. That was my original. As soon as I saw it, that's what I decided. We're going to lock in Panettone to light up column number three. Is that the right answer? Yes, it is! Right, we're all over this now, Helen. Column number four. In 2015, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge gave their daughter Charlotte what middle names? Was it Elizabeth Diana, Beatrice Eleanor, or Margaret Victoria? I have a feeling that they would have um, included Diana as a mark of respect and so I am going with Elizabeth Diana. We're going to lock in Elizabeth Diana to light up column number four. Is it the right answer? Yes! Come on Helen, we've got this now. Let's get to the halfway mark and light up column number five. The 2012 number one album Halcyon was by which singer? Was it Ellie Goulding, Olly Murs, or Pharrell Williams? Well, the briefing did very well. 
because um, Ellie Goulding came up. And so I'm not going to hesitate. I'm just going to go with that. And uh, thank you, teammates. Ellie Goulding. Ellie Goulding. If this is right, we got to the halfway mark by protecting another 980 pounds. Did Ellie Goulding have a number one album called Halcyon? Yes, she did. Nice. Right. We're on the second half of the war, two passbacks, three overalls still in play. Question number six. Salem is the capital of which US state? Is it Oregon, Florida, or Illinois? Right, geography is definitely not my strongest point. I'm just gonna pass back. We're passing back to the teammates. Ooh. Okay, we're uh. gonna discount Florida straight away. Um, Oregon, Illinois, Oregon? Yeah. yeah. Are you sure? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm happy to go with that. Okay, Oregon. Okay, we're locking in Oregon. This is right. We're lining up column number six. Was Helen right to pass back and rely on her teammates? It's the right answer. Okay, now this is good teamwork, all right? We've let up column number six. Still playing for £8,820, guys. Here we go. Question number seven. One pass back, three overalls <laughs> still in play. Which of these is not found in the neck? Is it thyroid, larynx, or sacrum? Uh, thyroid, I do believe, is in the neck. I think the larynx is here. I have a feeling the sacrum is in the ear but I could be wrong I'm gonna go with sacrum yeah it's not found in the, in the neck. neck yes so we're locking it in if it's not found in the neck we've just protected column number seven is it a right answer yes it is look at this now Helen other than the slight hiccup at the beginning this is a great round thank you Question number eight. One pass back, three overall, still in play. Television presenter Victoria Corrin married which comedian in 2012? Was it Michael McIntyre, Rob Brydon, or David Mitchell? I think I can eliminate Michael McIntyre. Um, Rob Brydon or David Mitchell? It's really difficult. Um, I think I'm going to go with David Mitchell. Once again, I sh I'm going to rely on my fabulous teammates to buzz in if they think I'm wrong. OK, <laughs> so let's lock in David Mitchell. They're not overruling. They think you may be right. Is Victoria Curran married to the funny man David Mitchell to light up column number eight? Yes, yes she is! <laughs> right. Well played. Penultimate question. Question number nine to protect another 980 pounds, Helen. Here it is. When asked, why do you drink? Who replied, because the finest people I've ever met in my life were in pubs. Was it Peter O'Toole, Richard Harris or Oliver Reed? Three men that um, love their drink. Mm. And um, I've never heard that saying so um i think what i'm going to do is uh, pass back okay my team passing back our last and final pass back they're all great hell raisers they're all sort of spent a lot of time in pubs i just on a guess would be oliver reed yeah i don't but... know any better so i'm willing to go with that what are we doing oliver reed oliver reed we're yeah, locking in oliver reed this is right i'm going to light up column number nine protect another 980 pounds is Oliver Reed the correct answer? Yes, it is. Well done. Well done. Good teamwork. Yes. Right, no more passbacks. But that's the very last question. You've got overalls. We've got three of them yeah. left. You're playing a good game here, Helen. Here it comes. Your last and final question. Question number 10. What is the tallest freestanding structure in the UK? Is it Crystal Palace Transmitter, Emily Moore TV Tower, or the BT Tower? I think the answer is BT Tower. I'm very lucky I've got three overalls, so um, I'm going to go with BT Tower. And if my teammates think I'm wrong, I'm sure I'll hear the buzzer. Yeah, I'm sure you will. We're going to lock in <laughs> BT Tower. There is a buzzer there. What do you think, buddy? I've got a feeling it's the Emily Moore TV Tower. So we're changing Helen's answer from BT Tower to Emily Moore TV Tower. 
Yeah. So far, she's had an incredible round. I know. We want to light this up because if this is right, the end game is worth eight thousand eight hundred and twenty pounds. If story. it's wrong, we lose nine hundred and eighty. We are now locking in the Emily Moore TV Tower because Hugh thinks it's taller than the BT Tower. Was Hugh right to overrule Helen's very last column? Yes, he was! Sweetheart. Thank no, you. Go join your team, mate. Good stuff, you. Now, team, the big moment. The chance to win the £8,820. It's good, okay? Here's how it works. We divide the cash once more into ten equal columns. We're going to give it a little reshuffle, and it's going to look like this. There it is. Eight. 1,820, right there. To leave with the cash, you must work your way across the wall one last time. Lighten up all ten columns, but now you'll only have two minutes to do it. You'll get three chances to light each column, but of course, the more questions you need, the more time we're going to use up. Get all three questions wrong, and that column and its cash is lost. We rebuild the wall, and a teammate must take over from where you left off. If, as a team, you failed to light up all ten columns. I'm afraid, Sarah, Hugh, Helen, you're going to leave with nothing. That's not going to happen, is it? No. no. Mm. Here come your ten key words. They are Bikini, Elvis, Barbara Windsor, Bean, Four Seasons, Sistine Chapel, Lemon, Electric, Pride and Prejudice, Space Shuttle. So. Big decision. Today you met strangers, but you've worked wonderfully as a team to have a chance to share that cash prize of £8,820. Who is going to face the wall first? I only know a couple, so I'd like to go last, so... I think you should go, because I think you're pretty good. Yeah. I'll, you... I'll give it a go. Third, yes, I'm quite, quite happy to. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The ladies are ganging up on Hugh once again. <laughs> yeah. Hugh, the responsibility has fallen to you. Will you please join me? and face the final golden wall. This is it, buddy. You've been nominated by the ladies to step up first. You feeling yeah. OK? Yeah. <laughs> I'll be better in two minutes' time. Well, we'll find out. You light up all ten columns within the time, and you and your teammates will be leaving with £8,820. Let's put two minutes on the clock. That time will start when I finish reading the first question. You, good luck. Bikini. In 1946, the designer Louis Reed unveiled his two-piece bathing suit named the Bikini in which city? New York. No, Paris. Ursula Andress famously emerged from the ocean in a white bikini in which James Bond film? Doctor No. Correct. Elvis. Which British actress stars alongside Elvis Presley as Sarah Lee Gates in the 1961 film Blue Hawaii? Don't know. Angela Lansbury. What was the name of Elvis Costello's backing band? The attractions. Correct. Barbara Windsor. Barbara Windsor voiced the Dormouse in which Tim Burton film? Um, Nightmare Before Christmas. No, Alice in Wonderland. In EastEnders, Barbara Windsor's character was famous for saying, Get out of my what? Uh, pub. Correct. Bean. In Lord of the Rings series of films, what was the name of Sean Bean's character? Um, pass. Boromir. What type of bean is used to make tofu? Um, soya. Correct. Four Seasons. In which country did the first Four Seasons hotel open? America. Canada. Who was the lead singer of the American rock and roll group, The Four Seasons? Don't know. Frankie Valli. Which food dish is known as a Four Seasons when prepared with four different toppings? Pizza. Correct. Sistine Chapel. The meeting of cardinals in the Sistine Chapel to elect the new pope has what name? Um, Conclave. Correct. Lemon. Which comedian's alter egos include Avid Marion and Keith Lemon? Um, I can't remember his name. Lee Francis. The area of Italy renowned for producing lemons is called the what coast? Um, Gordon? Amalfi. What is the French word for lemon? I don't know. Stop the clock! Yes, it is. Wow. The answer I was looking for, the French word for lemon, is citron. Oh. So, the clock has stopped. The money has been decimated. Hugh, you're playing a great game, mate. But unfortunately, you must step down. <laughs> Right, team, we now 
have to rebuild the wall. It's going to look like this. We are now down to 7,938 pounds. Still a lot of money. The question is, can one of your teammates bring that home by protecting the remaining columns? We need a new keyword to replace lemon, and that is cook. Sarah and Helen, who's going to step up now and try and complete the journey across the wall? I am. Sarah, please step forward and face the golden wall. We're now playing for £7,938. We have 37 seconds left on the clock. And that will restart when I finish asking this question. Good luck, my love. Cook. Captain James Cook served his apprenticeship in which Yorkshire port where there is a museum dedicated to him? I don't know. Whitby. Who was Peter Cook's comedy partner on shows such as Not Only But Also? I don't know. Dudley Moore. Robin Cook was an MP and minister as a member of which political party? A Liberal Democrat. Stop the clock. Decimate. I'm afraid it's a third wrong answer. The answer I was looking for was, in fact, Labour. Sarah, I'm afraid the clock has stopped. The money has been decimated. I'm afraid you're going to have to step down, my love. Right. Sarah, Hugh, Helen. For the third time, we've got to rebuild the wall. So I'm now down to 7,000. 144 pounds. Sarah managed to give no correct answers, so we still need four correct answers for your team to take home that money. We have 24 seconds left to do this, so think positive, okay? We need a key word to replace cook, and that word is air. Hello, my love. It's all down to you. Will you please step forward and face the golden wall? Do you think you're going to get a chance to face the golden wall? Absolutely not. Okay. No pressure. Right, if we can get across, get to the end, we'll be leaving with £7,144. Clock will restart when I finish asking this question. Helen, good luck. Air is mostly made up of what gas? Nitrogen. Correct. Electric. Which unit measures resistance in an electric circuit? Pulse. Ohm. In electric circuits, the earth wire is usually which two colours? Brown and blue. No, yellow and green. In electric circuit, what does DC stand for? Uh, oh, oh, something current. Uh, pass. Oh, I'm so sorry, your time is up. Helen, the answer I was looking for, you were so close, I wanted you to say it was direct current. I'm afraid, my love, you didn't make it across the wall, which means you and your team sadly are going to be leaving with nothing. But give them a big round of applause. Come and give me a hug, you. Mm, you are gorgeous. Come and let me get in here. Oh, mm. We are done. You, you, you. Well, listen, I had lots of confidence at the beginning. I thought we were going to nail this. We had so three close. great <laughs> rounds. But once you're up against the clock, it's very different, isn't it? Yeah. But tell me, yeah, yeah. have you enjoyed yourself? Oh, fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much for being a wonderful team and great sports. Well, hopefully, you'll join me next time to see whether another team of complete strangers can take home a huge cash prize or whether they'll be decimated. Take care, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>